We travel full time. We have no home. Um, we have no assets outside of the van and the boat. So we decided to give you a bit of information on how much it is to travel like we do internationally. Yeah, so one thing I love to do is when I follow people that travel full time is uh, when they give their um, like monthly budgets or how much they spend. And it's, it's very interesting because everybody's at a different level. Remember when we first started, we had spent like $11,000 on housing. So I posted it to one group that are involved in and people are like, yeah, I spent $50 last year. And so, you know, so it's all different levels of uh, spending and uh, you don't need to spend what we spend. You can spend less, more, whatever. But this gives you an idea. We travel full time. We have no home. Um, we have no assets outside of the van and the boat. And so I'll give you a breakdown first overall, kind of what we spend or, you know, um, the ballpark at least. So we spend for housing every month around um, $1,800 to $2,000. That's the goal. Sometimes it's a little higher, sometimes it's lower, especially when we're in the van, it's lower. And when it's a little higher, we're in New York City or someplace that we really wanna be. So we love that because it's variable. We can choose to uh, rent a house that has a pool in the backyard, a hot tub, whatever, or we can stay in the van and we can boondock, which we love to do also. Travel expense, which is airfare, train tickets, and this is more during international, but we're getting back into that uh, mode now, so it'll happen now. It was about $1,200 a month for um, uh, flights and uh, trains and uh, cruises, everything. So another category that I track is our food and um, dining and stuff and such like that. And anything that we use when we travel, um, it can include clothes, stuff like that. It's about $500 a week is what we do. We've always done that for 15 years. We've had a cash budget of $500 a week and we try and stick in that. It's a little different now. Um, uh, that was initially when we first started traveling, our income stream is a little better now. So we are able to kind of ignore that a little bit. Entertainment, it's variable, but that would include like our, when we went to Alaska and we did fishing, or if we do excursions off of a cruise boat or we rent bikes or whatever it might be. Um, I also budget for that, but I don't have a number for that necessarily. I shouldn't say I budget for it, I don't, um, but it does occur, I do track it. Um, if we look at June spending, and uh, what I wanna do is maybe you know every month just give a little breakdown of what we spend because uh, it's it's interesting to people, but we spend about um, sixteen hundred dollars on food and dining and clothes and such. You know, in June we were on the van quite a bit and on the boat, so these will be a little lower. Um, we have uh, healthcare, which is about nine hundred dollars for both of us, but we have a large deductible. And do we have an international plan too? Um, we do, but I don't have it out right now okay. because we haven't been able to travel internationally. Right. But um, I will do that. That's three hundred ninety dollars. Um, then covers us internationally. Travel in June, which would include uh, fuel, um, any flights that we took, such like that, is was six hundred dollars. And again, low in June because we were on the van and the boat. Um, uh, lodging was only five hundred dollars. Uh, entertainment, which was, uh, I'm not sure what we had for entertainment, um, was $250. And it was like a fishing license, such like that, that we bought in uh, Washington. And we bought the shrimp pots and stuff like that that we never used. Um, it, then the other thing would be uh, insurance that we have. We have insurance on the van, of course. That runs about $550 a year. And the boat insurance, which is like $300 a year, I believe. We have internet, which we use Google Fi. And we just recently added Visible. Uh, it's Verizon's internet service, which is unlimited. Um, that's $25 a month. We have that in the van, so that's not a, not a big deal. And boat storage we have, how much is that a month? Boat storage uh, was $50 a month. It was $30 a month for like 10 years or whatever, yeah. and it just went to $50. 
Um, and that's really, it's very common on what our expenses are per month. Like I said, June's a little different, but the nice thing is now June was uh, smaller. And so if we look at the, the home or the lodging expenses at $500, I figure close to $2,000. So basically that's a carryover then of $1,500 to the next month potentially, or the month after. So I look at it more on an annual basis than I do a, a monthly because our travel's up and down. I also use the uh, app Mint, it's from Intuit, and which makes TurboTax. They have an app Mint, which pulls in all our data off the debit cards. Um, any money that we spend then shows up on here, and then I go ahead and allocate it. I do have an accounting background and accounting degree, so I love doing this stuff. Just gives me an idea. We don't necessarily have to budget because my mind budgets. We don't stay in expensive places. We don't book expensive uh, flights. Meaning, for us, if it's we can we look for cheap flights and then we fly there. Um, but this helps me um, understand what we're actually spending and feel good on uh, as far as thinking we're not way over budget. But I, I, uh, I put it in here and then look at it from a few months perspective because like I said, some nights we're, or sometimes we're booking uh, flights to Germany or we're fly, uh, flying to Italy or whatever. And so those months can be a little bigger, but then we're on the van, it's much smaller. Um, so it's uh, in June we had a few Airbnbs, but only I think uh, twice we were. So that's why our, this number's low. The van's awesome because we love the boondock anyway. Um, so we don't do it necessarily to save money. It was just we're not going to RV parks. This is not who we are. And uh, we will do national parks and state parks and such. But um, so the, the van helps even out the rest of the year. So that's it for on our budget on how we spend uh, sometimes internationally. Yeah. And yeah. And in July, we'll do another one um, for the July because we'll have Alaska in there and we'll have Germany in there. And yeah. so early August, we'll do one for July. Again, I'm always interested in me because I'm an accountant, but I think it is an interesting fact or a thing to see somebody that's f traveling full time, how much they spend. And it's less than you think. I mean, we don't have a house. We don't have homeowners insurance. We don't have a new roof to put on. We don't have a new driveway to put in. So um, some of these expenses then are washed through as far as well. We would have had them if we were on uh, land. So anyway, we'll do another one and uh, just keep on doing them so you get an idea of what it is to, uh, in case you have interest in travel full time. I think it's helpful because people think it's super expensive and can be super expensive, but when people travel, they travel for a vacation, so they're spending a lot more than they would over a year's time. Yeah. And so that is why people really don't have a good grasp on how much it is that you can spend or don't need to sp spend um, while traveling full time. Yeah, and I always would say, we'll spend the same amount as Joe down the street and when they take a vacation, the only thing is we're going to take it for three weeks, you know, so we, t and they took it for one. So we end up spending the same amount of money. It's more that we do it over a longer period of time. Yeah. So And it's all in choices. You can stay at hostels. You can eat super cheap food. You don't have to do excursions. So I think this was a good um, summary on how we spend. And if anybody has some questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching.